Good evening. Welcome to California Today. I'm Liang Zhang. Here's a preview of some of today's stories. Firefighters are making progress on containing the fire burning in Yosemite National Park, but heavy smoke is still expected to spread over the next few days. The Olympic silver medalist was hit by a homeless man in broad daylight in Los Angeles. The former Olympian is doing fine, but reminds people to stay alert. Also in Los Angeles, people held a rally telling onlookers that babies' lives matter. They marched to a Planned Parenthood to make their voices heard. The Washburn fire in Yosemite is still burning, but firefighters are making gradual progress to contain it. Overall, yesterday was a very active day and a very aggressive firefight. Crews did an excellent job. All control lines and, and strategic operational plan is holding and valid at this point. The fire is currently at 3,221 acres. It is 22 percent contained with the 649 firefighters assigned to the blaze. From a distance, observers will continue to see heavy smoke production over the next few days. Fire activity is expected to increase each afternoon when the temperatures are at their highest and the relative humidity is at its lowest. Currently, there is no direct threat to the giant sequoias. Southern California police are on a manhunt for a long suspect after several 7-Eleven stores were robbed on Monday. At least one suspect killed and wounded several victims. Several stores closed overnight for safety. Law enforcement in Southern California announced several shootings that occurred early Monday in at least four different 7-Eleven stores. Reports said at least two people were killed and three wounded. La Habra and Brea police gave a joint statement the same day. As officers arrived on scene, they located two gunshot victims. Uh, Los Angeles County Fire Department responded to treat the gunshot wound victims who were subsequently transported to a local hospital. The shootings happened before dawn on the morning of July 11th or 7-11, the day of the 7-Eleven brand's National Free Slurpee Day. We want to start off uh, by confirming there was a homicide that occurred in Brea, and uh, uh, our hearts uh, go out to the families of that person. And uh, please know for the family that we're thinking about you and praying for you. The robberies or attempted robberies occurred at convenience stores in the cities of Upland, Ontario, Riverside, Santa Ana, La Habra, and Brea. This does appear to be a robbery that turned into a homicide. Um, at approximately 4.18 uh, this morning, uh, we received a call in our dispatch center of a male down possibly with a gunshot wound. Local police are seeking help from the public to identify the lone suspect seen in a black hoodie who they believe are connected to at least three of the shootings. Police said there's no apparent motive at the time, but Brea and La Habra police are working with other agencies to continue investigating and see if all of the 7-Eleven shootings are connected. A former Olympian is recovering after a homeless person attacked her over the weekend. Kim Glass, an Olympic volleyball silver medalist, was saying goodbye to a friend after lunch in downtown Los Angeles when a homeless person hit her. She said he was holding something and looking at her with hateful eyes. Before I knew it, a big metal bolt, like pipe, hit me, hit me right here, here. I just, it happened so fast. He literally flung it from the street, so he was not even close to me at all. Glass said the man was held down until the police and ambulance came. I do have... Um, multiple fractures up here and a small one here. But my friends have been family, amazing. According to the Los Angeles Police Department in the Post, the 51-year-old suspect was booked for felony assault with a deadly weapon without bail. Glass said her vision is fine and even joked about the durability of her false eyelashes, saying she'd want to make a deal to buy more. She also warns her viewers about being aware of their surroundings to stay safe because there are people who are mentally ill on the streets. 
A radical environmentalist group is making life difficult for SUV drivers around the world. Recently, they hit drivers near California's Bay Area. They cite climate change, but local police say the investigation is on the way. NTD's Daniel Hall reports. A left-wing group known as Tire Extinguishers claimed on its website that they deflated tires on 12 SUVs in California's Vacaville this month in the name of climate change. A spokesperson for the group told the San Francisco Chronicle that this is the first action in the Bay Area and the first of many. The group has already struck in other major U.S. cities as well as across the globe. A leaflet left on some targeted vehicle's windshields read, Attention, your gas guzzler kills. We have deflated one or more of your tires. You'll be angry, but don't take it personally. It's not you, it's your car. The group advised SUV owners to use public transportation despite some areas having limited options. Their website provides clear instructions with video on how to deflate cars' tires. Deflating vehicle tires can put the driver at serious risk of injury or death. Lieutenant Katie Cordona of the Vacaville Police Department said the case is being investigated as criminal vehicle tampering is punishable by up to one year in jail. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. A new state gun law is being challenged in court. The law restricts guns from being advertised in ways that are deemed attractive to minors. A firearm magazine publisher and a number of gun rights groups have sued California for the law being in violation of the First Amendment. NTD's Jason Blair has the details. Several gun rights groups and the publisher of a youth shooting publication filed a lawsuit against California's new law that bans marketing firearms to minors. They argue that the law violates free speech protected under the First Amendment and would restrict promoting lawful firearm-related events and programs in methods deemed attractive to minors. The suit, filed in the Los Angeles federal court on Friday, wrote that the law clearly violates well-established free speech precedents of the U.S. Supreme Court, making the law frivolous on its face. California District Attorney Rob Bonta's office responded by saying it would take any and all action against the law to defend California's common-sense gun laws. The measure in question, Assembly Bill 2571, was signed into law earlier this month by California Governor Gavin Newsom. He also posted a video on social media condemning the marketing of AR-15s to minors. Do you have no common decency, respect, or even common understanding that kids should not have one of these? The law comes after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the Second Amendment protects the right of a person to carry a handgun in public for self-defense. Jason Blair, NTD News, California. A group of people rallied in Southern California to bring a new meaning to BLM, Babies Lives Matter. They rallied to raise awareness about the conversations around abortion, following the Supreme Court's overturn of Roe v. Wade. Entities Jackie Reels spoke to some rally goers to hear more about why they're against California becoming an abortion sanctuary. On Saturday, the pro-life movement, Baby Lives Matter, held a rally in a march near the Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles. The event was to warn to Californians that despite the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, abortion continues in the state. One woman who previously had an abortion says there should be other options. And it was only by accident where I found out that there's a, a lot of women who talk about the negative impacts of abortion. I had absolutely no idea. I thought I was wrong for feeling what I was feeling because it, it's legal, right? And we think that the laws protect us. So for a woman, if it's legal, the laws protect us. It's a very, it's very strange. And the women that go into the abortion clinics, they feel like they don't have a choice. So women don't have abortions because of freedom of choice. They have abortions because they feel like they have no freedom and no choice. Zamorano said the people who are pro-choice are often silenced. The abortion industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, so they silence our voices. And that's why I'm here today, is to speak up for women just like me, to speak up for women, because not all of us believe that. Abortions are one of the services Planned Parenthood provides. According to the organization, it completed over 350,000 abortions in 2019. That's nearly half of the 620,000 abortions reported to the CDC that year.
One speaker emphasized the significance of the change to federal law. This is like taking the beach of Normandy, right? We still got to make it to Berlin, but it was huge. Roe v. Wade being overturned was just unbelievable for equal rights for all human beings, regardless of where you're located. And But now the work has just begun. We still got to take Berlin. But some Californian politicians are taking a different stance. Governor Gavin Newsom and lawmakers have said they want to make California an abortion sanctuary state. Assembly Bill 2223 is part of that package. They're pushing for even uh, such radical bills as infanticide bills, AB 2223, and um, they're preparing itself to be a, um, a sanctuary state for abortion rights. And so we need to mobilize and, and create an environment and a culture of life here in, in Los Angeles and California. According to the bill, a mother or health care provider cannot be held responsible for an abortion or perinatal death of a baby. But perinatal is not precisely defined in the bill. It could refer to infants ranging from newborn to one year old. At some point, people need to draw the line. And I think people with the infanticide, um, the AB2223 uh, families are just have had enough. For them to continue pushing the issue outside the womb, um, that's infuriated a lot of people. So um, I understand that it's going to go back to the states, but you know we'll take it state by state if we have to. We will. Marsha Warren of both the states and certain organizations opaque nature on abortion reporting. There's a lot of uh, people that have confirmed uh, how these babies are aborted and um, have been inside of the Planned Parenthoods. They target the um, minority communities, which is, is, is very uh, alarming for me because that's where I'm from. I, I grew up in a very poor community. The march started near Santa Monica Pier and proceeded to the Planned Parenthood near Third Street Promenade. Jackie Rios, NTD News, Los Angeles. We are going to take a short break, but here's a look at what we've got for you when we come back. The DMV is reminding Californians to apply for their real ID soon. In roughly a year, these IDs will be required to board flights and enter certain federal facilities. Over 1,000 people across the country were recently arrested in a month-long operation. We have the details on how the authorities caught so many alleged fugitives. And California is making progress on its high-speed rail. A section in Southern California recently reached a new milestone. That and more on California Today. In just about one year, Californians will not be able to board a domestic flight or access certain federal facilities without the new Real ID card. The cards are similar to driver's licenses with just a few extra requirements to obtain one. Officials are urging residents to get their cards as soon as possible. The Real ID is a new federally accepted form of identification. Californians will have their IDs marked with a gold bear and a star, something which old driver's licenses lack. The Department of Homeland Security extended its initial deadline of October 2021, citing the COVID-19 pandemic. To get on flights and enter certain secured federal buildings, Californians must get these cards by May 3rd, 2023. Showing a passport will still be an option to fly. According to a statement from Steve Gordon, director of the California Department of Motor Vehicles, there really is no need to wait. It's easy to start the application online. As May of next year gets closer, those who procrastinate might have to wait in line to be helped at the DMV. Today, you can get an appointment within a day or two at most offices. To obtain and apply for a Real ID card, applicants must present documentation that includes their full name and date of birth, along with two forms proving California residency. Applicants can submit their application and make an appointment by going to dmv.ca.gov. U.S. authorities conducted a month-long operation that resulted in the arrest of over 1,000 people. The suspects were allegedly fugitives wanted for violence and other criminal activity. Authorities announced the arrest of over 1,500 people wanted for gang involvement and other criminal activities. 
The month-long operation, known as Operation North Star, resulted in arrests in 10 cities across the country, including Los Angeles. The DOJ reported Operation North Star focused on fugitives wanted for the most serious, violent, and harmful offenses. These included homicide, sexual assault, robbery, or aggravated assault. Michael Moore, the Los Angeles chief of police, said these individuals pose a clear and present danger to the safety of Los Angeles. I'm proud of the work and the partnership of LAPD with the U.S. Marshals Service. According to the DOJ, the U.S. Marshals Service arrested people on various charges, including 230 for homicide and 131 for sexual assault. Ronald Davis, director of the U.S. Marshals Service, said Operation North Star was focused on areas where local law enforcement has seen a large number of homicides and shootings. The concept behind interagency law enforcement operations evolved largely from regional and district task forces. After removing a tax for marijuana producers, California approved the plan to tax lithium, the integral component of batteries in both the smartphones and electric vehicles. Existing lithium companies say the tax will scare off both investors and customers. Governor Gavin Newsom approved taxing lithium on Thursday as part of the state budget. The new tax comes as Newsom has pushed for California to be a leader in electric vehicles. Lithium is used to make lithium-ion batteries, which are the power source for those vehicles. It will be a flat rate tax per ton of lithium at first, and may later switch to percentage-based. The tax goes into effect in January. California sits atop giant lithium reserves in its Salton Sea region near the U.S.-Mexico border. The region has been heavily damaged by pesticide use. Tax revenue will go in part to cleanup of the area. But the lithium industry fears that the new tax may harm the sector and delay shipments. Two of the area's three lithium companies warned the tax would scare off investors and customers. Both said they may leave the state for lithium-rich brine deposits in Utah or Arkansas. According to the BP Statistical Review of World Energy 2021, the United States comparatively doesn't produce much lithium. It's tied for eighth in worldwide lithium production. As of 2020, Australia by far produces the most lithium in the world, followed by Chile and China. David Lamb, NTD News, California. California has been working on its high-speed rail. A section has reached a new milestone. It completed the framework and can officially start construction. The California High Speed Rail Authority announced on Friday that the final precast girders are in place and construction can now begin for Construction Package 4. The section stretches 22 miles in Southern California. The stretch goes from just north of the Tulare Kern County line, stretching down to Poplar Avenue south of the city of Wasco. Construction includes at grade embankments, retained fill overcrossings and viaducts aerial sections of the high-speed rail alignment, and the relocation of four miles of existing Burlington Northern Santa Fe tracks. Since the beginning of its construction, the project created more than 8,000 construction jobs, a majority of which go directly to those living in the Central Valley. There are currently 119 miles under construction in the Central Valley, with more than 30 active construction sites. Now to NTD's Thomas Christian for the Sports Roundup. I'm Thomas Christian, giving you the California Today Sports Roundup. Welsh international and former Tottenham Hotspur and Real Madrid superstar Gareth Bale was unveiled to the media in Los Angeles on Monday as he signs for LAFC. Bale said he was excited to join the project and said he was delighted to have received a very warm welcome in LA. Yeah, no, obviously I, I, I knew about the move. <laughs> obviously a while before I got here I was waiting on the, the visa, so um, yeah, I was just excited to get out here, excited to uh, get to the stadium, watch the fans. I obviously saw on TV, I've seen videos of how incredible they are and um, it doesn't do it justice how good they are actually in the stadium. So um, yeah, I've had a great welcome from everyone at the club, from John, Larry, the fans, the reception I got um, before the game on Friday was 
yeah, it's, the words can't describe. And um, yeah, everyone at the club has been, been incredible, welcomed me so well, everyone's so friendly. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to get properly started. Enjoyed my first training session with the team today and um, yeah, can't wait to get going. Gareth Bale is the second truly elite international signing for the club after Italian defender Giorgio Chiellini joined the club from Juventus. Bale played for seven years over two stints in the British Premier League for Tottenham Hotspur and then another eight years with Spanish club Real Madrid, manning the wing alongside none other than Cristiano Ronaldo. Gareth Bale helped Real Madrid win the UEFA Champions League five times and was voted to the UEFA Team of the Year twice in 2011 and in 2013. The Welsh international said he felt the standard in Major League Soccer was rising fast, adding he felt Europeans had an outdated impression of the league's standards. The standard here is, is really increasing. It's, I think it's a lot better than, than people in Europe really think. Um, the quality is improving, the league's improving, the stadiums are improving, the teams are improving. So uh, it's a, a league that's really on the rise. Um, and yeah, this club is, yes, it's new, but it feels like it's been here forever. The, the job that Larry and John and the rest of the guys have done to, to create such an amazing fan base so quickly is, is remarkable and um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a testament to them how well this club is, is run and uh, looking forward to be a part of it. LAFC is currently already in first place in the MLS Western Conference. Bale will give the team a huge boost, arguably already being the MLS's best individual player among the entire league with him signing onto the team. C.J. Abrams slugged a three-run homer, Jake Cronenworth and Manny Machado socked solo shots, and San Diego halted a 10-game losing streak in Denver by holding on for a victory over Colorado. Cronenworth had three hits and scored twice, while Abrams, Machado, and Noah Mazzara each had two hits for the Padres, who won for just the sixth time in their past 17 games overall. Sean Manea gave up two runs in six and one-thirds inning, Padres six, Rockies 5. Dalton Varsho capped a three-run third inning with a two-run single, and Arizona established a lead it would never relinquish in beating host San Francisco in the opener of a three-game series. Alex Cobb matched Kelly with a scoreless two innings before serving up a one-out single to Alec Thomas and a two-out hit to Christian Walker in the third. David Peralta followed with an RBI single to right to open the scoring, and Varsho single to right made it 3-0 later in the game. Diamondbacks 4, Giants 3. Corey Seager connected in a no-doubt home run, and Josh H. Smith hit an inside-the-park homer as Texas outslugged Oakland in Arlington, Texas. Leody Tavares added three hits, three RBIs, and two runs as the Rangers took the opener of a three-game series. Rangers 10, A's 8. And that's all for sports. That's all for tonight. You can join us again on California Today every weekday at 8.30 p.m. If you have any news tips or ideas for our show or just want to let us know how we're doing, our email is california.today at ntd.com. I'm Ling Zhang. Have a wonderful evening.